All right, let's go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ken Garcia. I'm the Senior Communications Manager at NCCER. And thank you so much for spending some time with us this afternoon to talk about general carpentry and some of the updates that we have added to this wonderful curriculum. Joining us today is Dario Van Horn. He is our Project Manager and Gary Ferguson, our Technical Writer in the NCCER Product Development Team. Also joining us will be Buddy Showalter. He's with the International Code Council and one of the many wonderful subject matter experts that we we have for uh, all of our curriculum across NCCER. We are going to be talking again about those updates and our hope is to have this all done by 2.30 as we do have a hard end. So we're gonna try to end this in a half hour. Yes, this is being recorded and we will have this posted on our website and we will also be sending it out to those of you who have registered or those who are unable to make it. If you do have any questions regarding the curriculum, please do add it to the Q&A button on your screen. So with that being said, I'm going to hand things over to Dario to take it from here. Dario? Okay, welcome everyone, instructors, members of industry, and our partners at ABC. Thanks for attending this quick webinar to showcase a little bit of what we're doing with General Carpentry. So uh, for those of you who may be new um, to what NCCR is, NCCR is a not-for-profit education foundation created in 1996. Um, the letters stand for the National Center for Construction Education and Research. And it was developed with the support of 125 construction CEOs and different associations, as well as academic leaders who tried to come up with something to revolutionize training for the construction industry. Um, the goal of this organization is to develop a safe and productive workforce. So we do everything that it takes to get these trainees standardized and prepared to go out there and get some work done. As of right now, our training contains about 70 different titles um, that develops into about 70 or more assessments. Um, 65 of them are in English and 11 of them are in Spanish. Actually, um, General Carpentry is undergoing that translation into Spanish as we speak. Over 6,000 NCCR accredited training and assessment locations exist as of right now in the United States. So what we're going to discuss now are some of the content and material that are present within our general carpentry. But before that, I just wanted to showcase that the title of the trainee guide has been revised and changed from levels um, to something more like general carpentry, which reflects the content that is present within each text. Uh, some of the key updates that we're going to break down a little bit more later on include the NCCR connect material has been enhanced we have created relevant video content that the trainees have access to and both the trainees and instructors will benefit from the self-guided learning and some project-based learning material lastly we have improved the new content by um, including some images that are aligned with it in ways that are relevant for the trainee can we go to the next slide? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is hand over the baton to our technical writer, Gary, and he's going to explain a little bit of the changes that we've done to the modules that will be present in this new trainee guide. Yep, and thank you, Dario. Um, and, and welcome to everybody here who's, who take, who's taking the time for our webinar. Um, as far as, as all the modules, what I want to mention first is there are, there are some things that at a high level we've updated. Um, all of the images, um, as Dorio mentioned, we've updated imagery. We've also revised a lot of the sub-objectives. Um, many of you know, especially if you teach this, that there are many sub-objectives for some of these modules. What we realized is that we needed to bring those up a little bit. And what that'll do is allow you to teach it at a little higher level at the objective level. And it will also allow us to, to really focus our exam questions and our test questions on those things that are really critical. So the things that you've told us that you need to teach rather than just having to have it because it's part of, of a, of a sub-objective or something like that. So that's one of the big benefits, I think, of, of this entire revised curriculum. Um, and next, uh, the exam questions. All the exam questions have been revised. So all those exam, uh, 
exams that you've seen in the past, um, those are about to become invalid since we are, uh, we've totally updated every question. So just keep that in mind as we go through this as well. And, and again, we have reviewed everything. Um, Buddy Showalter, who's on here right now, has reviewed all of our material for this level through, I, the, the, through the lens of the IBC and the IRC, since he is with the ICC. <laughs> um, first, I want let's talk about orientation to carpentry. So orientation to carpentry still has a lot of the same materials. We still cover the opportunities and the career paths that, that are available for carpenters. Um, but as always, safety is a big issue. So with this one, um, we, we stress a lot of that, the safety issues that you currently see. We talk about the hazards and the things that, that may help carpenters prevent um, from getting harmed by any of those hazards. And we talk about the skills and responsibilities. So much of the material that you have currently have in there, it's structured a little bit differently, but it's still there. As far as building materials and fasteners, this is where you'll probably see the biggest change in terms of objectives and sub-objectives. Uh, we really whittled down the sub-objectives um, and we have restructured this, the, the module so that the safety material is, is up front. The safety material we, we've added to, um, with that we've added a lot of the information on the silica rule, since there's a lot of discussion around that topic right now. So we've added silica rule information as, and as well as the information that pertains to, to that from OSHA. Um, and we still have a lot of, of the material, on, you know, just basic con concrete materials, handling and storage of the materials. Um, we've added a lot of information on engineered wood products as well. So you'll see that in, in the, you know, the wood structural panels and in the non-panel products such as cross laminated timber. So we've added some new things. Um, a lot of the new, new building materials are in this as well. Um, one of the things you won't see is you won't see hand and power tools in this module. We removed that because we started to get a lot of feedback from, from you, from the instructors, who were saying, hey, we're teaching this in core. We already covered this. And as most of you know, we've updated core. So we, we revised both of those modules on, on power tools and hand tools. So all of that information, we're going to let you teach that up front and core, so you don't have to bring it over here now and teach it in, in general carpentry as well. So that you won't see, you won't see those, that module. Um, construction plans and documents. We've restructured that a little bit. A lot of the feedback we were getting was, was more about why are you covering the details of in, within the drawings without first discussing the drawings. So we've kind of flipped it on its head and we put the information on the drawings themselves, the types of drawings, and then we drill down into the details within those drawings. So that's a big, big change you're going to see in that module as well. Um, next is principles of site and building layout. And as, as those of you who teach this, this curriculum will recognize this is a new one in terms of a module that's in general carpentry. Now there are pieces and parts of this that we took from level two, level three, and level four of the existing curriculum. And we moved that up. And the reason we moved that up is because we were also getting feedback there that much of that material was pretty general in, in nature and we needed to get it out of the more advanced levels and we needed to bring it together. So you're gonna see a lot of that material added and then we've, we've added some new material to that as well. So hopefully you'll like that, that module. It's a totally new module. Um, floor systems. Floor systems are, are it's, we, again, we cover the basic types of floor systems. Um, and, and like most of these, you will see fewer uh, uh, sub-objectives, but um, you'll, you'll also see um, the material, the ways to calculate that material for floor systems, that's still there. Um, and you'll also see the different components. We still cover all of that information. Wall systems, same type of information there. We still cover the, the same wall system components. We talk about installation of those components. Um, so that information hasn't changed either, but you also, and, and like the current module, you'll, you, you'll see how to calculate the, the materials needed for those wall systems. Roof framing, um, roof framing, um, we cover the different types of components. And with this one, like, the, like you currently do, we talk about how to use rafter squares and how to use framing squares. We spend a lot of time on that. We talk about um, a lot of the installation techniques and different step-by-step -step, um, methods and procedures. So that hasn't changed either um, as far as how, we, how the, the material that we provide in terms of step-by-step. -step. Um, basic stair, stair layout systems. Um, 
basic stair layout systems, staying information is there. We, we talk about the different types of system. We, we had have added some information on the engineered uh, wood products there. So you'll see more information on that as well. You'll also see some inf information on calculating that material. So that's, that's still the same as well. And building inf envelope systems, much of that information is, is the same. We have, uh, we still have information on the doors, the vapor barriers and installation of those barriers. We, we have added some information on zip systems or coated wood structural panel systems. So that's been added, added now as well, since we were getting a lot of feedback from you that you wanted the zip systems included. So we've added that information in there and um, hopefully I didn't miss any, I miss any of those, Dario. Um, I think I caught everything. So, okay. Yeah. Um, so that's it. I'll hand it back over to you. Um, so hopefully we'll see if we have any questions. Okay, so I don't know if you left me with anything exciting to say for the instructors. I think you kind of covered everything that they, you know, gets them worked up, ready to teach this. Um, I would like to th talk a little bit about the design that we're using for this new trainee guide. So some of the things that you can observe here is the way that we start each module, or well, before that, your trainees are able to flip through each module by using the color coding that's at the top. So that makes it easily to navigate um, as you're preparing them to jump into the next piece of content that they will be discussing. It makes it a nice way to get around the book. The next thing that um, we're looking at is when you begin, you have this list of objectives at the beginning and it covers everything that you're going to be working on um, and the knowledge relevant to this particular module. And that's followed by the performance task, which gives the trainees the opportunity to know which skills they're going to be applying in the duration of that module or at the end of that module. Um, the section opener, if you look over here to the right at the top, um, shows the organizational structure um, or sorry, in the middle, the organizational structure of how the module is broken down with those objectives and performance tasks, and then an introduction to the content that they will be seeing. Um, at the top, you can see how we now have the trait terms appear on the page right next to the text where they appear. So that makes it easy for the trainee who may be a, a little bit of a, a newcomer to the material to look at something that they may not remember or know what it is, and then look over to the right and get that definition immediately. And the last block there, the right and bottom, shows you the way that we break down mathematical calculations for the trainees, breaking everything down step by step to make sure that they do not miss anything and showing it in the easiest way possible um, to match with the levels that, they'll, that you'll have uh, in the classroom. Another thing that I want to mention before we move forward is the QR codes that you see on that first page um, at the bottom right. Those QR codes allow you to link directly to where that video content will be for the trainee guide. Um, and that we've picked out, well, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but we've picked out the best content that's relevant for the trainees um, in terms of practicality and what they maybe ask questions about in the classroom, according to the feedback that we've gotten from instructors, um, the content reflects what they would benefit from watching. Um, a big in, um, improvement that we have as well is the placement of images near the text. Um, a lot of times, sometimes you have a mention of a figure in the text and then you have to go somewhere else to find it we've made that appear as close as possible to where it's mentioned so that those references are not missed or you're not fishing around the trainee guide for that. And uh, lastly, we have highlight boxes that show the safety and other important information to trainees, as well as some uh, going green references that give them mention of how to preserve the environment and um, some of that green content that is way more important and relevant now in the building uh, careers. We can uh, move forward to the next slide. So 
the video resources that we have provided with this um, craft trainee guide are broken down and shown in a page that uh, you'd have the link to and that QR code links to and contain everything that you see here broken down from the different trade math um, videos like showing the three, four, five rule, showing um, how to do some of the calculations for areas uh, of materials that are gonna be used for different building parts, uh, the discussion of floor systems, the discussion of how to lay down chalk lines and laying out walls on a um, building site, um, a breakdown of the wall systems, we have a, an explanation of a staircase, how to build it up from a basic staircase, doing the math up till the assembly, uh, ceiling joist and roof framing, and the, the basics of looking through construction drawings, as well as cutting a stringer. We can go to the next slide. In the NCCR Connect, some of the improvements that we have made um, are providing that self-guided learning experience to the trainees. Um, they will have access to dynamic presentations. So that's like next level PowerPoint um, with a little bit more interactivity and able um, ability to navigate through those. They have practice quizzes, um, trade term quizzes, review questions, and interactive figures that are present within this um, connect. So I saw a quick question about um, NCCR Connect being out in fall of 2022. The trainee guide is available as of right now, but the Connect will be available for you to use during that fall season. Let's go to the next part. Okay, so the self-guided learning, this is more or less what it looks like. Just want to give you kind of a quick preview. Um, the trainee is able to navigate on their own. They get a little bit of a voiceover explaining the, the summarized most relevant content for the chapter or section that they're uh, looking through. It does not replace actually reading the text and it does not replace physically completing the performance profiles, but it does serve as a supplement um, that they can go through and add to their learning, as well as it has material that can be assigned as homework to those trainees to be completed at their own pace on their own time. Um, we can go over to the next slide. The dynamic presentations, uh, these do contain the material as it is in the textbook. So it has access to the trade terms, it has access to those objectives and the sub-objectives that are listed out for you. Um, and they, they're basically a scrollable version of the actual text. Um, they do have some optional section questions and interactivity, as well as they're able to, the, the presentation is able to give feedback to the trainee when they go through those questions. Um, so for those of you who are operating using, whether it's a, a readable device, a tablet, or um, any other electronic uh, way to access course material, this would be a beautiful option. Let's go to the next. The e-text um, is available as well in the platform, and that allows you to go a little bit more into detail with the linked figures being um having those the figure titles as the references in the text you can actually click them and go to the figure showing it enlarged on screen as well as the trade terms um and just to answer that question really quickly this does not replace the um the, this text does not replace the dynamic presentations. Uh, and I believe that it was also asking about the PowerPoints. The dynamic presentations um, are something that will be in addition to the PowerPoints. And we can go to the next slide. Okay, so that is it for today. And now we can open up the floor for some questions, if you want to sure. take it away. 
second. You got it. So we got a couple in here, and there's actually a couple here that are, are pretty similar. Uh, one is asking, does General Carpentry 6th Edition replace Level 1, or are they separate? And then someone mentioned they're starting their curriculum in August. Should they be using this curriculum instead? Okay, so it the way that the um, content was structured was to pull the material that is relevant to the trainee from the structure in which it was before to something that allows them to build on that knowledge in the order that they would need it in the field. Um, it has content from level one in a couple of modules that previously were present in level three and four. Um, and some of the comments that we got from instructors were that for example, with uh, building layout, the trainees were not getting access to that until way later in the curriculum. So it was better for them for that material to be pulled forward and for them to learn a, about how to lay out a building before they even get to, you know, building wall systems or other content like that. Um, Gary, would you like to add something to that? Yeah, well, I'm just thinking about of that building layout particular, I mean, that's a totally new module. Um, so that would be something that they wouldn't get if they were to use the old, older level one. Um, and there are, there's some new information that we've added, as I mentioned earlier. Um, there are a lot of things that we've updated, um, a lot of statistics you see in there, some of the safety information. Um, we've added a lot to that. So you wouldn't get that, that information if you were to use that um, first level rather than the general carpentry. Um, so it, it, it really, I guess it depends on how you want to structure your training program. All right. Our next question is someone teaches in a correctional setting and they want to know if these videos are accessible elsewhere other than from like the QR codes or how else can they get access to those videos? So uh, please reach out to us directly. We do have a lot of instructors that uh, have a similar situation. And what we do is that we find a way to provide that to you. Um, I know that that internet access and certain things like that may be a little bit controlled. Uh, so yes, we will provide you with a solution. It would just be something that we handle directly with you. So please reach out. Okay, um, our next question is, uh, will there still be an online NCCR monitored test at the end of each module? So uh, uh, Gary, I don't know if you wanna answer this one, but the yeah. answer is yeah, yes. There, there will be, and they are required to pass that module. Yeah, that, that exam. Okay. Um, in the past, if the trainee began with a third edition for level one and switched to a fourth edition for level two, the student would not receive an all levels completed trade com completed certification. Will this be changing? Could you repeat the question or? In the past, yeah, sure. In the past, if a trainee began with a third edition for level one and switched to a fourth edition for level two, the student would not receive an all levels completed trade completed certification. Will that this is be correct. Um, the way that it's structured right now, uh, thus the text contains new modules. So they would need to have, um, they would need to, to follow that structure and complete the modules in order to get that certification at the end. How many levels of this course will be available as a pathway? So there will be two different pathways, um, a forms construction pathway or forms carpentry and a carpentry for building construction pathway. Um, you are still able to complete all of the content, uh, but for those programs that can that have a little bit more flexibility, you can have a choice of going with one of those two as well. Yeah, and I think just one of the things that needs to be emphasized is the reason we did this is to allow people to get, to, especially for the training programs, to get people through the, the training courses and out into industry and out in, onto the sites quicker. Uh, one of the things we've been hearing a lot is that they, people have to get out to the sites quicker. There's, there's obviously we know there's a shortage, so people are wanting to get them through some of these courses faster and get them through the curriculum faster. So that was the, the, one of the big, big reasons we did this. 
Um, all right. Uh, there was one question. Let me see if I can find it again. If we stay with the fifth edition level one book, will our students be able to transition to the sixth edition for future levels? So the way that that, that, that can um, work, there are modules that carry a reference to the past content. However, they would still need to complete the, um, the content that isn't present in the previous edition before they can get that credential. All right. Well, uh, before we run out of time, I just want to thank everybody so much for joining us. Uh, we really do appreciate your time. Again, we know there's probably a lot of questions that you are still going to have. And by all means, definitely give us a call here at NCCER. Our number is 888-622-3720. That's 888-622-3720. If you have any additional questions, again, we are going to have this information, uh, this, this presentation up on our website. We will also email it out. Again, if you have questions, please give us a call. So thank you so much to everyone who joined us and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you everyone.